Welcome to Chamber Talk. We have a fantastic show for you. Actually, this is our first show on Chamber Talk for 2021. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Brian Nash, our 2021 Chamber uh, Board of Directors Chair. So Brian, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us today. Well, Heath, thank you for having me. Um, 2020, what a year. We had a lot going on last year and uh, lots of things that I know people would like to frown upon, but uh, you know, there's lots of opportunity when things don't go quite so well for a year. And in my business, we have the saying, there's opportunity and chaos. And let's talk a little bit about what the chamber did during the chaos of 2020. Absolutely. Now you've, you've given me y'all's uh, report card for 2020. And I can say even being on the board, looking back over 2020, I had no idea the chamber did, you and your staff did all the things that y'all did during 2020. And I think it'd be good for to let some of the people out there know what it is you guys did. Sure. Um, your first Friday means business. Tell us a little bit about that and how was it affected during last year? So first Friday business program is a monthly networking, but informational type of breakfast. Um, we want you to come to that breakfast and we want you to hear a business topic. We want to give you something that's relative to the business community and or even the success of the community, whether it be as related to the hospital, um, to our schools, to our workforce, whatever it might be, but, but an educational program and breakfast and some time to network. And of course, with COVID, um, you know, our ability to do that was changed. We used to meet over at Middle Georgia State University. We had 100, 110 coming to the breakfast and, and we had to move that over to the McGrath King Senior Conference Center uh, where we have 50 now. Right. But we're still drawing a good crowd of 50. When we have the breakfast, we're still having um, pertinent, relevant topics of conversation there. Uh, we, we've already had a great one this year with Dr. Thomas Kraft um, discussing COVID vaccine. Um, we're gonna talk about some blood plasma and the need for that coming up in February. And then in March, we're gonna um, actually talk about some virtual platforms that are available um, and one more than others that are successful. With all the Zoom meetings and things that are taking place today, um, there's a new platform that, that we wanna introduce and, and I'm gonna have one of my chamber peers come and share that information. Yes, okay. Most people, when they think of the chamber, they think of the business after hours and the networking. And so tell us, how did 2020 change, or did it change any of our networking events? Yeah, Brian, something's funny to me. I always like to tell people networking is good, it's great, it's important. It's also one letter away from not working. Um, <laughs> and too much networking sometimes could possibly lead to not working. But I want people to know and to realize, and that was part of the reason for the, um, the report card this year, we actually printed those. And so if you were a member of the chamber last year, even if you were a member and you didn't renew, you're gonna get a copy of this report card. And it's a three page report of the activities of the Chamber of Commerce. And then myself and my staff hand signed each one of those because we want you to know that, that we care about your investment in the Chamber of Commerce and we're here for you. But with the COVID and the lack of networking events, uh, we thought it that much more important to make sure we do a lot more than just networking and that mm -hmm. people understand. Um, you know, if, if we did no more networking at our Chamber of Commerce, we're, we're a relevant, vital organization in this community and we're vital a vital key to the success of this community. And I yes. think some of the things we're gonna talk about will, will point to that and, and make that aware to people. Yes. Um, now, something that Dublin Chamber now has is the Ambassador Program. And a lot of the Chamber members are familiar with the Ambassador Program because our Ambassador is in constant communication with us. But tell us a little bit about the, the program. So we got 30 Ambassadors again this year. Bass Physical Therapy has been our sponsor from day one. Thank you to Bass Physical Therapy. Uh, and Mr. Randy Jackson is our chair, and he's been our chair from day one, and, and what a cheerleader for the chamber Randy yes, is. He is. But Brian, 30 energetic, motivated ambassadors we had um, for training actually earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have already started. Some of them have completed all of their phone calls or, or an, an initial, initial email to their members, but, but they're calling to validate our, our records are correct at the chamber, that the address hasn't changed or employment hasn't changed or anything that would be vital for us to keep up with. 
and then ask you how we can help. Um, something, and, and you and I have discussed this a little bit, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more going into 2021, mm -hmm. but we want people to know the Chamber has a multitude of resources and we're here to help. Yes. Now, every year we have the annual dinner and in 2020, we were able to have the annual dinner. Tell us how that turned out and then what are we doing for 2021 concerning the annual dinner? So it had a little over 400 attendees last year at the mm -hmm. annual dinner. We had great sponsorship, huge crowd. A lot of people were there. It's always fun, a lot of energy, lots of good Dressed food. up like space people. Uh, we were going into the future and little did we know, um, <laughs> boy, you know, Elsie went into the future and, and was our leader last year. And she didn't tell us about this pandemic that was going to hit, but uh, no, Elsie, provided great leadership for the chamber last mm -hmm. year. We had a fantastic year. We had a very successful year under her leadership. I wanna throw in a plug real quick and tell you, we were one of very few chambers that grew financially and by membership last year. Uh, when so many chambers were losing money and members, we grew in both areas. So uh, testament to our board, all of you guys and Elsie and her leadership there. But, um, so 2021, you know, we couldn't have that event. It usually takes place in January uh, out at the DuBose Porter Center. And with COVID and everything going on, we just couldn't have that event right now. But we are planning. I want you to know we are working diligently to try to plan something for our members and our community. More than likely going to be uh, mid to late April. Uh, we've had a, an opportunity to work with Mr. Richard Nesbitt out at Ranesdi. And uh, I think we're going to have a great event. Hope to have some details coming forth on that soon. Well, good. I mean, we're all looking forward to it. I hope so. The Irish Chamber Breakfast. Uh... So you you're on that committee, the, yes. and, and we you know we're not having um, we're not having uh, festival events this year. Yes. So in respect for the festival committee, uh, we kind of decided we're not going to have an Irish Chamber Breakfast. That would say, well, hey, we're going to do our event anyway. Um, but we do want to do something. We want to try to work with the, the community, of course, with the festival committee um, to have a breakfast. It won't be an Irish Chamber breakfast, but maybe a, a breakfast, um, whether it's that first Friday of that month or, or whatever mm -hmm. else it may be. But it's always been a great event, a, a very well supported community event. Usually around 300 people come to that. Um, so we are looking forward to to getting something in place there and then certainly going forward uh, in the years to come, getting back to the Irish Chamber Breakfast. Yeah. Not only the Irish Chamber Breakfast, but I think we're all looking forward to getting the St. Patrick's plans back going I, again. I hope so. so. Brian, let's, let's take us a real quick commercial break okay. and we'll come back and get into some more of those fabulous things that we had going on in 2020. We'll be right back. Put the team at Citizens Bank of Lawrence County to work for you. For more information, log on to cbs-lc.com. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. Welcome back to the show again, Brian. Thank you for taking time to join me today. Thank you for your leadership in, in 2021. I know we're going to have a great year working together. Um, before we went to the break, we were talking about some of the things the Chamber's been working on this year, and you got our, our report card there. The, some of the things that, of course, we're not going to go line by line. You yeah. will receive a copy if you're a Chamber member, and if you're not a Chamber member, if you'd just like to see what we're doing or get more information, uh, please give us a call at the Chamber or visit our Chamber website, uh, www.dublinlawrencecountychamberofcommerce.com. Uh, but we'd love to share our information with you and let you know what your local Chamber of Commerce is up to. Uh, let's get back to it, Brian, what you got? All right. Um, the Women in Business, is that a new thing for this past year? Women in Business is, I think we brought that two years ago. We've mm -hmm. had some phenomenal speakers um, at that program, again, Due to COVID, we, we had to cut the numbers in half. That, that right. program usually sold out quickly within a day or two with 100 attendees. Um, but we cut that program this year and we actually recognized three of our local 
business women that have had successful careers here and they shared so, shared some of their trials and tribulations and, and just some stories. Um, I actually sat in on the event and uh, I interviewed the, the panel that we had. Um, it was very interesting, very interesting program, a lot of different takeaways and it was interesting talking to the ladies afterwards. You know, Susan Brandon was a speaker and somebody would say, well, Susan said something and then Marsha mm -hmm. Dixon and then we had Stephanie um, Miller from down at Y96. And so each one kind of hit on a different area in a different profession. Um, so there was something for everybody at the program. Well, great. And we hope to continue that program certainly this year. And with that, Brian, um, I think we want to look at a, an in-person offering as well as a virtual option. And that's something else that and we can talk about a little bit going forward into the 2021 program. Um, we want to continue doing our in-person meetings as much as we can, certainly adhering to CDC guidelines and, and to our uh, city ordinances. Right. Um, and we do appreciate those folks and all the hard work and everything they're doing to keep people safe. We want to make sure we're doing our part as well. Yes. Okay, great. The golf tournament, that is one of the biggest events that the Chamber puts on each year. Um, tell us what happened last year. Golf tournament got postponed. Uh, we pushed it back, but we did have it. We had a fabulous golf tournament, sold out event, full field of players. And I would tell you, if you care nothing about golf, it's still a great place to come. Uh, it's a great place for sponsors because you're gonna meet people and talk to people and build relationships that, that you may not have the opportunity at another time or place. So whether you're a golfer or a business, um, you know, get involved with the Chamber Golf Tournament. It's a great day. I'd say all together between golfers and, and volunteers, there's probably close to 200 people out yeah. at the course that day. And, and you're gonna intermingle with those folks at some point or time during that tournament. Uh, some great relationships and friendships are formed at the Industry Appreciation Golf Tournament. I personally love how there's sponsors at each hole and on mm -hmm. each tee box. So as you're making your rounds, it's like sometimes you get finished with a hole in the group in front of you instead of going on and playing. They're still talking with the, the sponsor and having a good time. And some of our sponsors are very lively on the tee box. They're very, great. very lively and very charitable. So I, yes. I tell anybody, if you come to that tournament and you go home hungry, shame oh, yeah. on you. Yes. Uh, yes. Because you're fed when you get there, you're fed all day, and you're fed before you leave. And thanks to the folks over at Farmer State Bank, somebody goes home with $500 cash in their pocket from our ball toss at the end of the day as well. So it is a great tournament. I did not win the ball toss this I, year. I, I don't even get to try <laughs> that, but uh, always a great time. Yeah. Now, something you've been doing, I'm not sure how many years, but the shop at home. Um, tell us how... That Shop way. at home checks currently, I want to say, and you've got the paper, but I believe there's about $28,000 worth of Shop at home checks currently in circulation in the Dublin Lawrence area. $28,000 that's going to be spent locally right here. It has to be spent right here in Dublin and Lawrence County. So we partner with our businesses. They accept those Shop at home checks. Uh, Morris Bank works with us on, on recouping that money for those businesses but it's, I like to say, just like money. Um, mm -hmm. But you do, you come into the chamber, you buy your shop at home check, you get the list of participating businesses. Um, we give a, a ton of those are, are issued during Christmas, of course, from some of our industries and manufacturers. We appreciate that support. Uh, they give that out as bonuses sometimes to employees. So, and it is a great bonus to give to a staff member, an employee, uh, or just as a gift to someone and say, hey, let's keep these dollars local. So great initiative. It was around before I got here. I wish I could take credit for that one, okay. but it's a great initiative and, and we're sure we're, we're gonna keep it going. Well, great, great. Now, tell us a little bit about your staff and what they're doing interacting with the members. Um, so I, I cannot brag on our staff at the chamber enough um, when COVID hit. You know, this was brand new to us as well. And when a lot of people were saying, where do we go? What do we do? How do we? Um, I think we were that, that solid force and foundation in town. Uh, our phone rang off the hook. And, and we had phone calls from, you know, what are the guidelines? Uh, what are the CDC guidelines? What are the recommendations? Can I open my business? Is, can I be open? Am I closed? How do I get 
helped with PPP, EIDL, and we assisted with every phone call, anybody that, that called our chamber, member or non-member. Um, we helped everybody, yeah. and, and we were glad to help everyone. And I would tell you, our staff wrote over 500 handwritten letters to our members, personal letters. Not So if you got a letter, yours wasn't exactly like someone else's. Those were personal letters written to every single member saying thank you for your investment in the Dublin Orange Chamber. And they also made phone calls to go along with those emails to let people know again, we're here for you. We know you have struggles. We know there's issues uh, in the community. And, and I want you to know whatever it is, call the chamber. Uh, if we don't have the answer, we'll get you an answer. Yes. Now, how many ribbon, you had ribbon cuttings last year, but was that significantly impacted? Uh, fairly impacted yeah, with the COVID, yeah. um, not as many as we typically had. I still think we had over a dozen ribbon cuttings last year, which is, is certainly nothing to hang your head down about, but um, still trying to get out, promote those businesses. Um, again, we're gonna be doing some new things, hopefully promoting through some virtual platforms, but uh, I always wanna, I, I like to get out and do ribbon cuttings and say, hey, we got a new business or an expansion or a new investment for our company, um, so we wanna keep those numbers up. I would tell you again, I mentioned with, with the leadership with LC last year, um, our retention numbers and our growth um, to finish the year at, a, at a, a plus 12. And people say, well, 12, well, that, that didn't sound like a lot. Well, you gotta remember, we lost some folks too. And then yes. some of it was just plain and simple. I understand people couldn't afford, you know, yep. to, to be a member of the chamber. Some of them closed their doors, unfortunately. So with the attrition um, and the growth and to have that, that balance at the end to be in a positive, anything positive, um, what a great year we had. And, and I know we've had several conversations over the past year about how there's other chambers around the state and across the country that, I mean, they're at probably close to half of what they were in 2019. I, I think, uh, you know, again, on some of those phone calls, and I'm in constant communication with folks from New York to California to Florida in Chambers of Commerce, and, and you hear 24, 26% loss in membership, mm -hmm. uh, $100,000 down in revenue, $50,000 down in revenue, just numbers that, that, and even Chambers of Commerce, unfortunately, that closed their doors, you know, um, and some of them, and, and you and I have had this conversation, some of them, that, that would call me and they would say, hey, what do we do now? And I, I would ask them, well, when you, other than your networking, what were you doing? And they said, well, that's what we were doing. We were, we were networking, again, going back to what I said earlier, it's one letter away, it's that close to not working. Yeah. Well, if that's all you were doing, you, 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 you got a hard road ahead of you. Fortunately for us, there's a few things on that sheet right there that are networking events, but, but we've got plenty on there to show where the Dublin Orange Chamber is making impact here in, in a lot of other areas. Well, I can tell you, I, from being from a different community or living a few different places as an adult, our chamber here, they set the bar very high. I've been a part of other chambers and what you guys do here is second to no one from what I've experienced. Well, thank so you. kudos well, to the well, Dublin Lawrence Chamber. Our staff, our board, our ambassadors and our members and, and a great community here. Yeah. So it's a team effort. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Hello? That's how some people do things. Right away. To us, everything we do is personal. Because anyone can answer the call. It's who shows up that matters most. That's the quality of your independent agent. And the company that stands behind them. Ask Curry Maffet Insurance in Dublin if auto owners make sense for you. It's really hot outside and the deals are even hotter with the City of Dublin Natural Gas. How would you like a free 40 gallon hot water heater plus free gas installation? It's easy. Just pick up the phone and call Brad Grimes with the City of Dublin Natural Gas 277-5048 and get a free hot water heater and free installation. The City of Dublin Natural Gas saving you money every single day. Now, I know that the Chamber, they worked with some other, other groups and co-sponsored some things. Um, the list gets long, but there's a couple of them that I want you to tell us all about. The quality rate of childcare and uh, 
what you guys did with the 3D printer okay. for the school system. So tell us about those. Quality rated child care is, is just, if I could say my baby, but that's my passion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, two years ago, we, we've got about 20 um, state funded that received some state funding um, daycare, child care facilities here in Lawrence County. Um, I found out that, that we had maybe two that were even quality rated. Wow. And we found, we also learned that the state of Georgia had um, passed some legislation that said if you were not quality rated by the end of 2020, you wouldn't receive that funding any longer. So with the help of, of gee, I hate to name names because I will leave somebody out. I'm just going to say the ladies out at the Lawrence County School System and the city of Dublin. We were able to partner together with Capital City Bank as well. Um, and, and long story short, today we've got 18 quality rated child care facilities in Dublin Lawrence County. That's 18 out so of, out of 19, 20. Or 19. 20. Yeah, I think we were down to one. We, we had one and we were working with them hopefully to get them to that quality rated status. We also have some that, that had moved to two star, that moved to three star rating, which mm -hmm. is the best rating that you can have. Um, so uh, just a privilege to go into the daycares and be able to bring the supplies and the, the things necessary for them to become a quality rated child care facility, which is huge to me if you're looking at Dublin Lawrence County and you're considering moving your family here and you know we don't just have child care facilities, we've got quality rated. They meet the state standards and even exceed those standards. Um, so you'll feel good about bringing your children and leaving them in our daycare and child care facilities. And prior to you working with these daycares, how many of them were members? Well, the sad part of this is today even, we have two members of the chamber of these daycare child care facilities. So anybody watching the show, if you take your children to these daycare child care facilities, we would love to have more engagement from those facilities and of course have them be a member of the chamber. Um, but again, the chamber realizes the importance of quality rated child care. So we're gonna do what we've gotta do yes. to make sure that this community benefits from quality rated child care and we're going to keep supporting them and, and pushing that initiative anyway. Uh, another one that was vital um, and so proud to be able to partner with Georgia Power, um, technology. Man, technology is just, you know, I read something the other day and it, it said if you think the world's changing, you're wrong. It's already changed. Yes. <laughs> and it has and um, technology certainly continues to grow and, and while we're doing okay, we're, I, I think it's fair to say, and I, I love our educators, I appreciate every one of them and all the work we're doing, but I think we would all agree we're, we're not ahead in technology in our schools. Right. But we were able to partner with Georgia Power to purchase, uh, and the county, to purchase $10,000 worth of 3D printing equipment for East Lawrence Middle and High Schools. And to go into that classroom and talk to those students that are using that equipment, I remember one fellow, and, and I think he's going to be a NASA engineer or something, <laughs> he, was, he was talking way over my head about what he could do with this new 3D printer. But he did say to me, he said, Mr. Taylor, when we, go, when we would go to the competitions, we just got our butts kicked. We didn't have right. a chance against the other schools. He said, now we're not on the same playing field with them. We have an advantage. And it, and it almost just brought me to tears that day to, to hear him say that and think, wow, uh, we have a small part in that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a great program. And I think I recall at some point in time last year, you telling me that maybe the technology teacher um, was saying that if any of the businesses in town wanted. Yeah. So Mr. Carmen is more than willing, if there's an industry, a business, it, it doesn't even have to be a, an industry, but if you've got a product that, that you could use some help with, that could be manufactured with a 3D printer. Um, he would love to work with you and partner with you. You can get in touch with us at the chamber, we'll connect you. But we wanna get these students doing things and, and making things uh, and learning things that, that's gonna grow our community here. Yes. And let's use this technology. We've got it now, let's teach our students to use it and, and let's make it give back to the community. So, yes. Yeah. That is great. Um, last year, was the election year and there was local elections, big elections. Tell us about what the chamber did with it being the election year and your... So at the chamber we, we want people to be informed, we want them to make an informed decision. So 
all of the local races, whether it was sheriff's department, whether it was probate judge, um, county commissioners, we held a forum and, and we give both sides an opportunity to state their platform. We don't really call it a debate. It's, it's more of um, tell us your platform, tell us what you're going to do. Right. Um, Brian, you won't see us take a side one way or the other. We're never going to support one commissioner over another, one councilman over another. Um, we want you to make an informed decision. So we, or, or myself even, I ask those questions that, that are sent to me from our, our local viewership. And, uh, and we get answers, and then we want you to make an informed decision um, as to who these, these leaders are going to be in our community. So that's a, a privilege to be able to work with the folks here at TV35 to be able to bring that type of, of programming. That is part of advocacy. Um, we're not actually advocating for one particular candidate, but we're advocating for that information, for you to get that information and know so you can make an informed decision. Right. The chamber um, works with, and this list, y'all, it's like 20 different places where you work with the mentorship um, with these different groups. Um, but you did some special things for the school and the new teachers last year. Yeah, we had a new teachers initiative. We actually, it's so cool when you do, and this is just Dublin and how great Dublin is. We wanted to be able to give a $50 gift card to all of the new educators. Mm -hmm. uh, we reached out to the membership and we said, hey, we need some financial support here. And, and if you are a donor um, and you support these teachers, you could also give some promotional items to the teachers. Um, Will Curry at Curry Company, they jumped right in and said, hey, we want to co-sponsor this with you. Um, and I forget, they sponsored 10 teachers or however many they, they sponsored. Um, and Will and I actually took the bags out to the schools. But the cool thing about it, we had such an overwhelming response. Um, we were able to give to a lot of those teachers $100 gift cards. Um, some were not hundred. We ended up actually because we, we had, and we gave back every penny. And mm -hmm. so we were at an odd number. So we kind of brought all the bags in and the teachers would grin. Some of them at a minimum, they would have a $50 gift card in their bag, but some of them had hundred dollar gift bags and, or cards. And then they had a, just a variety of notepads and pencils and rollers and different things to help them in their classroom. But it was our way of saying welcome as a new educator mm -hmm. to Dublin Lawrence County. We support you. And, and we're here to help you if we can. And we certainly look forward to that program again this year. And did that for the city and the county school system. Any, in all of the school, all of the new educators and Trinity. And Trinity. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Now, the chamber this past year, or may have even been two years ago, I don't recall, there's a new insurance program. And uh, Tell us about that. Chamber Smart Plan. We work with the folks over at Clements and Keene. Appreciate um, everybody over there working with us, Marcus and Darren. Uh, just real brief to tell you, if you have two or more employees, you, you probably need to call and get a quote. Um, I believe the team over there through this Georgia Smart Plan saved 10 businesses, over 100 employees, over $100,000 total. I know one business in particular saved $38,000 on their health insurance through the SMART plan. So there's no reason not, it doesn't cost anything, call, get a free quote and, and, and see if we can help you through the Chamber SMART plan uh, with your health insurance. And then also for any industry manufacturer or anybody that has workman's comp insurance, uh, we have a program there that can save you seven and a half percent on your workman's comp as well. So just, just more reasons why you would be a member of your local Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And with that, Brian, we probably need to take one last break and then okay. we'll come back and try to wrap some things up. We'll be right back. I'm Don Carswell of Dublin Chevrolet. The new year means new savings on your favorite Chevys. Save $2,500 on the Chevy Trailblazer RS. And remember, Don sells cars well only at Dublin Chevrolet. Hey, I'm Glenn Register with Hometown Supply. And with the new year comes a new commitment for all of us here at Hometown Supply. We are committed to providing you with quality products and service on our full line of new and used appliances. We also offer service on most any brand of appliance on the market today. So if you need repairs on appliance, just give us a call here at Hometown Supply. And remember, if you can't do business here, you just can't do business. Welcome back to the show. 
uh, going to wrap things up. Boy, Brian, I tell you what, man, I, I knew we did a lot. I knew we did a whole lot. When you start trying to talk about it, man, I could fill up three or four shows. Um, but I do hope people will be on the lookout for their mailer. And, and if you have questions, concerns, you're not sure what the chamber does, why we do, uh, or if we can help you, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We had one last thing. I think you wanted to ask a question about one yeah, of the and it functions. Was sometime around Thanksgiving. I know we went to lunch one day and you were like, hey man, I got this idea. And uh, you ended up putting it together like in a day or a couple of days. Tell us about Localopoly and what you did this year. Localopoly was awesome and I hated that. Actually, Ruth Allen brought that to me in the office one day and she said it was something similar, another community, and, and we tweaked that mm -hmm. for, for Dublin and Lawrence County here. But a great way during the holidays to keep money local. So we had monopoly looking game boards and if you went to those stores and shopped and saved your receipt after you collected five so kind of like a monopoly um, five receipts you were eligible to be into the drawing to win a gift card from i believe we ended up with over 20 restaurants and retail stores that had all um, participated given a 50 dollars gift card so there was over a thousand dollars worth of gift cards that one person was going to win all the money was local and, and Brian, the greatest thing about that program, uh, Ruth Ellen added up the receipts and there was almost $10,000 spent locally during the holidays that we know stayed right here in Dublin, Lawrence County and that we hopefully we could attribute to our local Opoly initiative, which we certainly hope to see grow this year. Yeah, so. I was just amazed at how quickly y'all put it together and the response from the businesses Absolutely. in Dublin. It was, it was awesome. All right, let's move into 2021. 2021, and, and you guys, this is your leadership, this is your year. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you guys have already done, and, and then if you got some questions for me, I'll jump okay. in where you need. All right, well, the Chamber this year has an excellent board. There are just fabulous community leaders. Um, really enjoyed, back in November, we got together for a two-day board retreat. We uh, had some Georgia Chamber, um, staff to come down guide us and we've come up with what we think is a good 2021 um, one of the things that we're going to try to do is we're going to try to re-engage our community um, the business community and our regular community for our business growth um, how is the chamber planning on well sometimes there's a, there's a disconnect there sometime yes. and there's a disconnect sometimes between the community the business sector and the school system even. And so we've got to work together and partner together. Uh, we've got a lot of initiatives working even with the, the Dublin Lawrence County Development Authority to work together. A lot of partners um, that we're gonna to come together. I like to think of the chamber as the, the conduit, kind of the glue in the community that, right. that not only holds everything together, but brings everything together. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're gonna do that. And along those lines, Brian, I wanna take just a real quick second to say, you know, one of the phone calls that I, I get at the chamber sometimes um and i've had some people some people look at this a different way i'm just going to say it as it is they call and they want my list of minority owned businesses and i would tell you at the chamber of commerce today we don't have a list of minority owned businesses i don't mean that to offend anyone i hope it encourages you because we've never had a list of minority owned businesses nor would we because i don't want to segregate any part of our membership uh, race, religion, color, age, gender, or whatever it could be. If you want to be a member of the Dublin Lawrence Chamber of Commerce, we welcome you. We, we don't just say, okay, we welcome you. Yes. It's always been that way, and as long as I'm there, it's always going to be that way. So uh, come one, come all, you're welcome at the Dublin Lawrence Chamber of Commerce. Great. Now, broadband is something that I think our whole community can agree we need some help on. How's the chamber gonna work to be a stronger advocate to bring better broadband into our community? I'm just gonna get up and leave on that question. You know, it's aggravating, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. I feel your pain. Yeah. Um, you know, we work on it, we work on it, we work on it. I will tell you our plan. So. So Ron out at Progressive Rule has been mm -hmm. a great advocate and ally of ours and they have made some great progress out at Progressive Rule. 
Um, we do work with the city and the county some. Um, Brian and Lance try to keep me informed in, in, as to any progress that's being made with some of our bigger um, vendors, the Verizons mm -hmm. and the AT&Ts. But I think it's going to take some public-private private partnerships sometimes and, mm -hmm. and that type of investment. There is a lot of funding at a state level. So if, if Matt Hatchett and Larry Walker and some of our local representatives can help us to, to acquire some of that funding, and sometimes it's a match. Um, the state or the federal government will give money if we can match. So we got to be creative and think of ways to do that, but it's, it's just got to happen. Uh, I wish I had the answer. I wish I could sit right here and say, if we do this, this will happen. I, it's just not that simple, um, but we're, we're, we're that annoying dog that just keeps barking and won't go away. We're going <laughs> to keep barking. So. Yeah, and that kind of goes into one of the other things that we have on our program of work, and that's to develop and create the diverse public-private partnerships. Um, now, when we get into our initiatives for 2021, you know, I, I think we're all sick and tired of hearing workforce development, workforce development, workforce development. Um, tell us what the Chamber does and is going to continue to do, because we all know that workforce development is super important. Mm -hmm. um, and and I would, I would rather show you than tell you, but, mm -hmm. but just to tell you briefly what we're doing, Summer Youth Works is mm -hmm. a program some people have heard of, some have not. It's a great partnership and a collaboration. Again, I, I probably shouldn't name names because um, there's a lot of people that are involved in that. I do mm -hmm. want to say a special thank you to our Tiffany Stanley and Kessler Holder, those two ladies work with the city and, and without them we couldn't do what we do. But um, it's to try to get youth to work here in Lawrence County. Matter of fact, we're putting them to work. It's not to try to get, it's putting youth to work here in Dublin, Lawrence County. We're taking high school juniors and seniors. We're reaching out to the business sector and saying, do you need people and or even would you be willing to mentor or coach? Um, it's an eight week program during the summer and we are going to put kids to work. In addition to that, I uh, got a great partnership with the folks out at the College and Career Academy, our um, students in business, and sometimes we call it a heavy metal tour. Uh, it just sounds like a lot more fun <laughs> in some of the places. But we want to get kids out of the classroom into the workforce. Right. Let them see um, what does that look like? Um, what does it smell like? What does it taste like even? So is it dirty? Is it clean? What kind of education do I have to have? How much money can I make? What are the benefits here? Um, things that they may not be learning in a book in the classroom. So get them out of the classroom into the workforce. I, I think I've mentioned with you some future growth in that area would be even the teachers in business. Let's get these teachers into the classroom or out of the classroom into the business and let's get the business involved in the classroom. Uh, and then maybe even further down the line principal for a day where we could pair some people with some of our principals. Folks, you would you'd be shocked to know, I've done this program before in other communities, uh, what your local principal goes through in, in the balancing act or juggling <laughs> act, I, I would say that uh, how, what they do on a, on a daily basis. So just things, again, creating awareness, creating yeah. partnerships, public, private, and, and creating awareness. Great, great. Um, with 2020 being what it was, and I guess to some degree not being over, um, a lot of small businesses and medium-sized businesses too, they're, they're struggling with this pandemic and you know financially, mm -hmm. workforce. Um, how's the chamber go in and what can they offer some so of these businesses that are struggling? Resources, resources, resources. Um, let's just say you, you called and you said, look, I, I had a gentleman, matter of fact, in the office this morning said, we, we can't find skilled workers that, that can pass a drug test. And I said, do you know we've got multiple agencies that provide staffing that are members of the chamber, I'd love to put you in touch with some of them. Uh, to go a step further, we've got a summer youth works program I introduced him to. We're gonna have kids this year that, that Mike could start working with you on a temporary basis and move into a full-time plan with you. Uh, we work with the work-based learning coordinators at all of our area high schools. And we have some folks over at Easter Seals that, that have some folks that are already trained to work, to do some labor type jobs and, and I mean what, what do you need and if you come to us hopefully we can get you an answer there maybe you mm -hmm. need some extra capital um, we can put you in touch with SBDC or SBA to help mm -hmm. you with grants and loan opportunities 
Yeah. If that doesn't work, we've got local bankers also right here that, that may can work with you and help develop a plan. And, and Brian, we've got a wealth of knowledge, um, not even in our chamber, but in our community that we have access to, that we can bring people in and sit down and have a brainstorming session with you and say, let's talk about what we need to help your business. Maybe you're doing everything you can do and you just gotta stay the course and keep doing it and doing it well and you'll see your way through this. But whatever it is, and I don't care whatever it is, we've got resources to help. Okay. Yeah. The last thing I wanna talk about is the Chamber's role in public policy. You know, you're, you're an advocate for business, but how else, how else does the Chamber get involved from a public policy standpoint? So from public policy for us, it is 100% pro-business. Business, business, business. And I want to make sure people know that's where we advocate. That's where we're going. we will take a stand for pro-business legislation. Again, as far as a candidate and a political platform, we don't choose sides. We inform so that you could choose sides. Let me make something else real clear here. We're the local. We are the Dublin Orange Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are affiliated with the Georgia Chamber of Commerce. How, and I love Chris Clark and his team up there. I gotta be honest with you, sometimes I don't agree with them. I'm sure there are things I do sometimes, Chris Clark would say, I don't know why he did that. <laughs> um, but do know they take stances from time to time that we don't support. There's also the American Chamber of Commerce that we are a member of that I certainly have multiple issues with sometimes with things that they do. But overall, Brian, they do a lot of good for a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. So we are affiliated with those organizations, but in no way, shape, or form, because I actually had somebody call my office and ask me, well, I do not work for the United States Chamber of Commerce. Um, the man that, that's in charge there is not my boss in any way, shape, or form. You and my board of directors are my direct report. So we are the local chamber, but, but we are affiliated and there's a lot of perks and benefits more so than the negatives with us being affiliated with those organizations. Well, that's good to know because what works in, in LA or in Atlanta may not, not be what's here. best for Dublin Lawrence. Yeah, and, and some of their policy and the taxes and things that, that they're in favor of or opposed to sometimes just don't line up with what we do here in middle Georgia, yeah. but that's okay. Heath, I've, uh, you know, what we went through earlier, you have listed as a report card. Um, personally, I feel like on any given year, this was an A-plus job. I don't know how to grade it higher with it being 2020. So, I'm an excellent job to you and the staff. Um, I don't know what else to say except great job. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for your, your leadership. Looking forward to working with you. Um, I, I want to say thank you, man. I've had nothing but great chairs to work with. Mm -hmm. Elsie, Larry Shank, Bent Gay, Jeff Cannon. I hope I didn't leave somebody out. Michael Maffitt. Um, I, what a blessing to mm -hmm. be here and, and to say I get to be the leader at the Dublin Orange County Chamber of Commerce. Um, I think we've had great success. We've had great success. This chamber's got a long-standing reputation of success. And, and things that have happened and, and what a pleasure and, and again privilege it is to carry on a lot of the work that Willie Polk and even those before her did uh, and accomplished. But yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, 2020 was a year of teaching and learning and growing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there were some negatives that took place there, but I've never been more creative, adaptable, flexible, um, and, and re-energized even to say, hey, we, we've got a we got lead here. Yeah. So looking forward to a great 2021. Uh, we want to say thank you for joining us today. And uh, I think Brian would agree, helping us make today yeah. and every day a great day for business in Dublin, Lawrence County.